case of completely split emotions, terrific performance and result, but completely overshadowed by what looks like a really nasty injury to young Harvey Elliott. It is, it is, it is a bad injury. Um, ankle, how I heard now I was dislocated, we could put it back, he's now in the hospital. So um, we have to wait, obviously. He played again an incredible game, he's an incredible player. Um, now he's out. So do I want such a young boy having this experience that early in his, in his career? No. But um, now it's the case and we have to be there and we will be there. So um, we will play football without him, but we will wait for him as well because um, obviously he's a, a, a top, top, top player. It happened right in front of you. So you had, did you have a good view of it at that moment? No. I, I saw the situation, but it's, I saw then immediately the effect because I could see his, his foot not in the right place. That's why we were all shocked, absolutely. Um, that's it. You went onto the field, obviously checking a player and you spoke to other players. You also spoke to the referee as well when you were on the field. Yeah, but nothing important. I, I'm, I'm not sure it's the right moment to, to speak about these kind of things, but... Yeah, no. No, um, that's nothing important, really. No, it's, in fairness to you, it is difficult. It's an emotional thing. It's a young player. Very. We're talking about that. Very. I understand. Returning to the football itself, if you can, how good were your side today? Really good, really good. We played for a long period, a top, top, top game after the after the red card and Harvey off because obviously everybody in shock. Um, we lost rhythm a little bit, but still controlled the game. Gave them a little bit too many counter attacks, too many set pieces. That's all. That's true, but who cares um, in that moment? Um, we played top football. We, sh we should have made more of the football we played. Uh, means in the last third in the box, we, the, the, the goal we scored, the mover from Trent, that's actually a perfect example for what we should have done more often. We had these situations, we just didn't find a player. Um, but in the end, really, 3 0 is a top result, um, and we are not that greedy that I'd stand here now and say we, we should have had 5 6 7 0. Um, but I wanted to have clearer chances, that's true. Uh, we had a lot of finishes, we had a lot of shots. Um, but not enough, or not good enough, let me say it like this. So we, so we have space for improvement, that's cool, but um, the football we played was exceptional. A word on Mo Salah as well, he joins the 100 club with 100 Premier League goals, and the fifth fastest to do it in the Premier League. What does that add to the achievement of 100 goals, to do it so quickly? Oh, I, with, with Mo's records, it's crazy. Huh? So they, they, I, I don't know how many he can break, and he's probably desperate to do so. Um, since he joined us, he's a <laughs> what a player, and still, still hungry, still hungry. I saw him in the in the dressing room. We were obviously all really in the situation with Harvey, but he was still not happy for not scoring one or two other goals. Um, that's it. That's how top class players are, and it's fine. You said to us before the game you were looking forward to the atmosphere, taking them on. You did that. But also, a mention for your own supporters, who more than made a bit of noise today. You mean the one I spoke to? The supporters, the, your own supporters, Liverpool fans. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, who made themselves more than heard. Absolutely great. That's how it is. Every, the lead supporters are obviously an outstanding crowd. But when the team is 2-0 down, it's not so easy. When the other team is as strong as we are, I think, in a lot of moments when they've tried to build up and we, 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 we intercepted the balls, you cannot celebrate that. You cannot get louder in these moments. So we killed the atmosphere slightly, and that's why we could hear our people a bit louder. I'm not surprised that they did really, um, that they did a good job as well. Appreciate your time, Jürgen. Thank you very much. Come three goals and three points for Liverpool against Leeds at Ellen Road. But uh, unfortunately, we have to start with that horrendous image in the second half for 18-year-old Harvey Elliott. We all winced, Michael. Um, we're not going to show it all for obvious reasons, but this was the moment when Strout made the tackle. Yeah, it was. There was a lot of force in terms of his weight into the tackle. It was actually his trailing leg that, that caused the damage. The first part of the tackle, he's, he's actually come round um, Harvey Elliott and, and, uh, and, and got the ball um, clean, but it's the 
it's the trailing leg, as I say, and the weight of that trailing leg on Harvey Elliott's planted foot that's done the damage. And then, you know, we've obviously seen it in real life. Um, it's not a pretty injury at all. I mean, he's going to be out for a long period of time. I feel sorry for, for um, Strout, is it? That, Pascal Strout, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that committed the, the, the foul. He got sent off, you know, and... I think the red card was debatable, actually. He certainly didn't have any intent. Maybe he was out of control, maybe he was in the air. A lot of force going down on the leg. So I can see arguments either way. Um, but really, all those arguments are irrelevant. I just feel so, so sorry for the lad. And, uh, and it's going to be a long road to recovery for him. Good news for Harvey. He was sitting up there. I was encouraged to see that sitting up. You know, normally there's oxygen uh, onto the pitch. You know, when you get such a bad injury. I've had one myself. You know, that looked... Really, really bad for such a young player who's playing so well and he's got an opportunity in his dream move to Liverpool. You know, he's, he's come, he's done the loan spell, he's come, he's playing in the first team, the manager trusts him. And then it, it'll, he'll be back. You know, look on the positive side. He needs to start the rehabilitation now and be really positive in his mindset that he's got a long career ahead of him. Really sorry for him. I think it was a genuine attempt to win the ball from Strauch. I'm not sure that it was a red card, um, but as Michael quite rightly says, it, that's irrelevant. The, you, you, our thoughts are just with, with uh, Harvey Ellett. Indeed, and he has a mental test ahead. And unfortunately, it brought back memories for you at Ellen Road in a Liverpool mm. shirt as a teenager. You've been through that mental test that you've got to come back stronger. Yeah. Lots of people, most players, have, uh, have a bad injury, at least one bad injury throughout their career. Mine was at Ellen Road as well. Coincidentally, I know Tim's broken his leg himself. I don't know how everybody else deals with it, I know it used to take me two or three days to really stop feeling sorry for myself and then get on the treadmill in terms of, not physically, but mm. in terms of, right, come on, you know, stop feeling sorry, this is it now, this is your road to rehabilitation. Whether you need surgery afterwards, I'm pretty sure Harvey Elliott will. Um, it's, it, it's, everybody is different. And then you'll go through ups and downs throughout the rehabilitation. I used to get very frustrated at the end as well when I could feel I'm getting close, you know, only a month away. I used to really be... Hard to live with probably back then. But at the start, for a day or two, it just... I just used to look at the fixture. I couldn't stop picking up a paper and looking at the fixture list of your team and thinking, well, I'm going to miss all of that, all of that, or will I be back for this? And it just it really does hurt you mentally. But once that's out the way, you have a day where it's right, come on, this is it now. And it used to take me two or three days. I'm not sure whether you were any different, Tim. I was quite lucky. You know, I come at the end of my career, but it, it hit me hard and then I retired mentally in my head. I got back to playing. Um, but it's really difficult. But he's such a young boy. You know, he's got to be positive with it. Everyone has injuries in their career. Hopefully, for his sake, if he looks on the positive side, he's getting it out of the way. And they go through that experience. And it won't scare him. He's a brave boy. You can tell how brave he is the way he wants to receive the ball and play for a Liverpool football club and express himself. He's going to have plenty of opportunities to do that. We, we are like we keep saying, we, we wish him well, but I'm, I'm sure, and, and don't know the boy, but I've seen, him, I've seen enough of him to know he looks like a real good character who's going to roll his sleeves up, get himself properly fit again and be back. We, we'll see him and he'll grace that, that great Liverpool shirt again. He's had a couple of great examples as well, hasn't he? Obviously different injuries, but, you know, he's seen over the last year or so some real bad injuries in that Liverpool team. Mm. You know, Virgil van Dijk, um, Joe Gomez, Matip's had injuries, Jordan Henderson. Um, so he's seen long-term injuries. He's seen how players can come back from it and almost seamlessly just be back to, to, uh, to being brand new again. It'll give him confidence in the medical team. They're actually going to look after him because they'll become his best friends for the next year or six months or however, however long it's going to be. Um, so that'll give him some comfort as well. But, you know, we're, we're trying to find some positives in a nasty situation. Yeah, we are. And all our thoughts are with Harvey Ellett and we hope for positive news from that nightmare situation for him. Now, in terms of the football, Michael's a member of the 100 Club. There were only 29 players who were in it in the Premier League before today. There are now 30 that 100th goal. He did, yeah. We mentioned it before the game. He's, uh, he's been an absolute dream for Liverpool since they, since they signed him from Roma. Uh, he showed signs at Roma, scored a lot of goals, but he's certainly developed again in this, uh, in this team, in this red shirt. You know, the goal itself was one of his easier ones. I think Joel Matip, he was frustrated at him certainly when he didn't play him the ball to start with, and he threw his arms up as well, he wasn't too happy. 
We see Trent as well making that uh, overlap that we've been screaming out for in, in recent games. And then it was one of his easier finishes, but he can score so many types of different goals. And as I say, 100 goals for, for Liverpool, 100 Premier League goals for Liverpool is, a, is some achievement. Fair post debut, I mean, he wish he could turn back the clock. He's had a terrible time. He never got out of bed today, Firpo, because they give him a torrid time down that down the uh, left uh, right hand side, and he lured him in there with that touch. He just said, "Come and try and win this ball," and as he did, he just got the other side of him. Hence, why he was standing on the six yard box. Alexander Arnold squares it to him. He taps it into an empty net. It's the preparation. It's luring Firpo in. Firpo had a bad game. He's going to have better games than that, surely. <laughs> So, as I say, uh, 100 Premier League goals for Mo Salah. Only four other players have got there quicker. Alan Shearer, Harry Kane, Sergio Aguero and Thierry Henry. He's in good company. Uh, and as you can see, only two behind him in that list. One, Robbie Fowler, another centurion who we can talk to, of course, who's been at Allen Road all day uh, for us. First of all, let's deal with that then. I mean, you're, you're proud to, to see those numbers next to your name. The fifth fastest for Mo Salah. Yes, I think, I think Michael was just touching upon it there. I think he's been phenomenal since he came to Liverpool. Um, I'm not, he's not got 90, he's got 98 for Liverpool, but yeah. in the Premier League, isn't he? So Michael got it wrong there, pal, but I know you mean. <laughs> uh, but look, yeah, he has been phenomenal. Um, I think he, he, he scores different types of goals. Um, I think what he'll be more, more pleased about, he doesn't really consider himself as the architectural type centre forward as well. So he'll, um, I think someone pointed, pointed out to him a while ago that he was, I think he, he beat me. Uh, and he went, well, and he's a forward and I'm a winger. So he calls himself a winger who scored 100 Premier League goals, which is, uh, which is extraordinary. He'll call himself a striker when he knows about these records, though, won't he? Don't worry about that with you lot. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, but, but he has, I mean, he, he's, he's such an handful, isn't he? So, I mean, he, he, he's that player who will be quiet for, you know, 50, 55 minutes and then he'll spring to life for, you know, for four or five minutes and then he'll go quiet again. But he's very unorthodox, but he's, he's, he's very uniquely brilliant, I think. And actually, Robbie... We've seen an awful lot of clever business from Liverpool recently in long-term contracts with a lot of the squad, the heart of the squad. Mm -hmm. He's the one still to do it, isn't he? That's the next important accomplishment. Well, I think that's probably what you know us as Liverpool fans will want to see. I think his, his record per games, per goals has been fantastic. We all want to see him stay at the club. We all want to see him break a lot more records. I'm not sure whether he'll catch you in rushes, but uh, I think there's a few more records for him to, you know, to get to. Um, a lot of the talk before the game and before the season was uh, was about Liverpool's new signings, uh, and you know, ironically, we we've made a lot of new signings in terms of um, you know getting players to extend contracts. Uh, and more hasn't hasn't yet, but I'll be I'll be amazed if the club aren't doing everything to try and keep him out of the club for as long as he can. In terms of those records, just to play devil's advocate, you were once the youngest to get to 100 goals until somebody else came along <laughs> and took. Well, like Robbie, I keep <laughs> saying to uh, to Steve and the guys that. Mo Salah's broken it, but he is getting on in age. We did it when we were young pups, didn't we? Ah, he's not as good as us, Michael, is he? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and he probably played in better teams. <laughs> it's, I, I know you're just obviously all talking about obviously the positivity with um, you know looking after RV Elliott, but I think I mean what what a player he is and what a player he will be when he comes back from injury. I think he's obviously a, a real real bad injury there, but. Uh, he'll have the right team around him and um, uh, he'll come back stronger. And you know what? Looking at positives for him, he'll come back and he'll enjoy the game a little bit more because, I mean, Michael and Tim will tell you, they're sat there and when you are injured and when you have you know, nasty injuries, you come back and you appreciate the game more. Uh, and there's no doubt he'll do that. And he, he, I'd, I'm not saying he'll be better for it. Obviously, that's a horrible thing to say, but he'll, uh, he'll, he'll enjoy the game a little bit more when he comes back because he, he'll, he'll, he'll miss it now. Robbie, we were just talking about injuries, of course. Myself and Tim had uh, a couple of, you know, nasty ones that, that keep you out. You had a, a, a bad knee injury yourself. How was your mindset when you're when you're coming back that rehabilitation stage? Well, well Mike, I, well, I bro actually broke my leg when I first got onto the team as well in the in the FA Cup. As well. I've had you know so many injuries, and I think this is probably why I I do. That's why I was saying about before with Arby. I appreciated the game a lot more. When you're out, you miss it, you really do. Uh, and you obviously can't wait. I heard you talk about it before, you can't wait to get back in, um, you know, back in and back playing. Uh, but I am I'm a nightmare. I mean, you, you'll know, when I wasn't playing when I was fit, I was, I was horrible. So uh, I, was, I was that little bit more horrible when I was injured and I, and I couldn't play. But um, I appreciated the game a lot, lot more when I did come back from injuries. OK, stay there, Robbie. Uh, the second goal, 50 games without a goal, he's not there to score goals. Fabinho, he's there predominantly to stop them. Uh, but he's, it was an important second goal to start the second half, this one. 
Absolutely. I mean, they, they broke away well. This is time and time again. We could have had 100 clips of this when they broke away. Yota does brilliant reverse passing into Mane, and it wasn't his day until very late in front of goal. We just thought that that possibly might have been a goal kick. But as you see it there, it, Mo Salah just kicks it into the defender there, and it's a definite corner. But the marking from the corner is horrendous. I mean, time and time again, uh, Van Dijk got, got himself free. And uh, when they fall for you in a six yard box, if you look at Furpo there, I know I'm digging him out, but look at his part here that he's meant to be marking there. For Reno. He does not know where he's going. Um, and it ball just falls for Fabino, just smashes it into the net. You like them, Michael, oh. don't you? It's eight yards out, middle of the goal. Yeah, well, it's not his forte, is it? As you mentioned, Steve, scoring goals. He's, uh, he's been exceptional for Liverpool since he's, he's been there. He's got a different role in the game, but still, He'll still want to get onto the score sheet more, and, uh, and it was an important goal to really kill the game, I think. Yeah. And then the third one, Robbie, I'm interested what you think about this finish from Sadio Mane. Yeah, I thought it was a brilliant finish. Uh, really, while well. Tim was just being pointed out there, he probably wasn't great in, uh, in his maybe decision making in that final third. Uh, but I thought he played really well today. He was probably just missing that goal. Uh, I mean, he, you know, he huffed and puffed, and I mean, I was thinking he was going to like dummy it and let Ox score, but. Um, I mean, I show as a man who's who's just desperate to score goals and desperate to do well. And I mean, I was so pleased he got on because I thought he deserved his goal because I thought his performance, I thought his performance warranted a, a good goal. Yeah, great awareness I thought there from Sadio Mane of, of what's up around him to take his touch and to spin. It's all in one movement, wasn't it? To take his touch on his back foot to give him the uh, give him the space and then swing with his, his right foot. It was all one movement, and uh, you can see he's practiced that one before. And all the discussions about 100 Premier League goals, rightly so, for Mo Salah. That is 99 Liverpool goals for Sadio Mane. And, and the improvement in him since he signed for the club, Robbie. I, I'm, I'm a big, big fan of him. Um, I know people you know, will say, oh, he's, he's this or he's that, and you know, he's a confidence player. But, I mean, I was, I was delighted with his performance today because he did, he wanted to get on the ball. He, he looked confident until he got to that final third when... Maybe started snatching at a few things which weren't going his way, and anxiety played a little bit more, played a big part. But uh, he's he's a phenomenal player, and you know we, we spoke before about Mo Salah and you know the the, uh, the how good he's been since he's been at the club. You know Sadio Mane's got to be mentioned in that same breath as well because he's been he's been phenomenal for Liverpool as well. Just looking at the uh, the front three or front four, Robbie. We saw, obviously, Jota start today. What do you think Jurgen Klopp's front three is now? If we had, if we had the Champions League final tomorrow, who do you think he'd pick out of those four? Well, it's a tough one, Michael. I think we all know. Um, I mean, I think he's a big, big fan of Bobby Firmino. I think he really likes him. Um, but you can't argue with Jota's performance as well. Since he's been at the club, he scored goals as well. So it's an headache for the, for the manager. You know, he'll, he'll want to pick his best team. Uh, but I think if, if all the players were fit and he, he had to pick them, I think Firmino would come in because I think he is a big fan of him. Uh, I'm, I'm not, not sat on the fence with Firmino because sometimes I think he likes to, to drop too deep. You know, there's ways you can look at that. Way that he, when he drops deep, you know, he, he creates spaces and, and maybe little angles for maybe Sadio Mane or, or Mo Salah to run into. But for me, he drops a little bit deep too much. Uh, and I think as a defender, I think he, he's sometimes a little bit too easy to mark. And as you rightly know, uh, when you've got top-class strikers and they can't all play, it's difficult to keep them all happy as a manager. <laughs> I know that more than anyone. <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and they all want to play as well, and they're all desperate to play. They're all desperate to score goals. But as a manager, it's one of the biggest or biggest and the best headaches you can have. Big players, we are delighted to welcome Virgil van Dijk live to the show from Ellen Road. Virgil, good to see you. Well done. And listen, before we talk about football and, and the three points and the three goals, all our thoughts are with Harvey Elliott. Uh, how is he, first of all? I got no idea. Uh... <laughs> Um, I think he's in the hospital at the moment, uh, so we hope for the best. But obviously, it didn't look, didn't look good. Um, so yeah, we'll see it in the next. We hear it probably in the next couple of hours, uh, in the next day or so. So uh, let's just hope for the best. But yeah, it's a tough one, tough one to take. And um, but we'll be there for him. Virgil, it's Michael Owen. I was just wondering, in terms of your uh, experience, your. You know, the last season you had out injured with a long-term injury, he's obviously looked up to players like you and seen how you can come back. I'm sure that'll be a big benefit for him. Yeah, um, definitely. And then the good thing is that I think with our team and what I've experienced is that everyone is there for you. Uh, obviously, being injured is, is, can be lonely. Um, 
So you have to find the right balance between your family and, and your teammates uh, to take time together. And um, you know, I'm sure they will be fine. But don't, you know, let's don't make any conclusions at the moment yet. Let's see what the outcome will be from the injury, and then we'll uh, then we'll we we'll all be there for him, focus on, uh, on how to get back as soon as possible and as good as possible. Indeed, he's in all our thoughts. Now, in terms of the football, um, how pleased are you? Another clean sheet, three goals, three points. Yeah, very, very pleased. Um, it was nice to be here today. For me, it was the first time to play here. Fantastic atmosphere, something that I embraced. We all embraced, to be fair. We, uh, we know it's going to be a, a very intense game. But, you know, we, uh, we were dominant. You know, obviously, uh, they created some moments on the counter. I think Ali had two, two saves to make. Apart from that, we had, we had loads of chances that we could have killed the game a little bit, a bit earlier. Um, but to come away here with 3-0, three points, clean sheet after the international break is something to build on. So we'll take that. We'll take that. There's obviously still a lot to improve, but you know we at the start of the season and uh, you know, we uh, we'll look into it and, and try to improve. Salah, the fifth fastest man to 100 Premier League goals. Yeah, respect. Yeah, you know. I think he's an incredible player for us. Um, since he joined the club, you know, he's been. Uh, been outstanding. Uh, his work at ethic is, is, is incredible together, you know, with the other, everyone basically. But obviously, if you see the work they do up front, you know, makes it a lot easier for uh, for us in the back. Um, the pressing they do. If you speak to other defenders from other teams, you know, the pressing that we have sometimes and whether you beat beat one of our strikers when they come back, you know, it's difficult. Difficult for anyone. And, uh, you know, today, you know, they're going to play uh, man marking. So, you know, it's difficult to play man marking against Mo, against Sadio, also against Jota in this case. So uh, they did fantastic and helped us again with, uh, with a good win. Virgil, just a quick question on yourself and your own physical state at the moment. It appears to everybody that you've come back. Well, it looks like you've never been away in many ways. How do you feel physically? <laughs> yeah, no, I feel fine. Um, I said from the start that I just need games. And... Um, I'm, I was just happy that the manager obviously put his trust in me from the first Premier League game against Norwich. And for me, it's just, you know, to keep keep playing. Um, obviously, with just see how every game goes um, as today and don't look to the next game. But uh, obviously, today went, went fine. A couple of good challenges, uh, sprints, uh, organisation. And um, I'm just happy and, and, and enjoy every... Every bit of it, you know, it's been uh, it's been a long time, and um, I know it's difficult for uh, people to see or notice if I'm fully 100% fit again. But I'm I'm, I'm trying my uh, my absolute best to uh, be as good as possible, uh, good as as I can again. But I'm not a robot, you know. Uh, each game I have to take as it come, and uh, that's what I do. That's what I try to do and manage it with uh, with the staff. Uh, have good, good communication, make sure I get my uh, recovery, you know, as good as I can with uh, doing the right things, um, nutrition, rest, sleep, uh, relax. So, uh, so far, so good. Certainly, with three clean sheets. And just finally, for the team, 10 points from 12. Yourselves have done it. Chelsea, Manchester United, City a point behind. Very early days, but do you get the sense you have to keep that consistency and don't let teams potentially get away from you this season? too early in the season to look at other teams. Um, for us, I think the manager said it many times that we are focusing on one game at a time. And that's how we uh, approach the season. You know, uh, We knew that other teams uh, trying to improve around us and have improved around us. But you know, any game, we have to take it as it come. And uh, that's how we do it. So uh, today was a very tough one. Um, beforehand, obviously, in the end, it looks like it was easy, what it wasn't. Now we have the three points and now we'll focus on the Champions League and then obviously after that we'll get back to Premier League football. So we'll take it as a come, don't look at the others at, at the early stages because the season is so long still.